Going back 24 years ago, there was an Israeli jet fighter pilot named Kobe Sherman. Kobe would fly maneuvers over Lebanon. One night, Kobe was in his cockpit of his fighter plane. There were four other pilots in this team. They all stood on the tar tarmac in formation, ready to roar up into the sky. As usual, Kobe checked the dials of the various gauges he had in his display panel, secured his helmet, and got ready for takeoff. His plane was the lead aircraft. He was flanked by four other jet fighters, two on his right and two on his left. This team, Kobe and Arik and Nati and Ofer and Gadi, they had worked in tandem for weeks. They had a nightly routine, and they knew it methodically. They performed drills over and over in total darkness. Kobe's jet fighter plane would take off first. The other four would follow moments later. Once in the sky, they would assume a position that resembled five fingers stretching forward. Kobe would scan a potential bomb site. He would set up a precise target, and he would shoot off a flare illuminating the site. The other bombers, the other four bombers, would then come forward. They would release their missiles. After this, Kobe would then thrust his jet completely upward. He would fly in a huge arc. He would come back around the site, and he would take photos to assess the success and the accuracy of the hit. That's how these five operated every night in the war in Lebanon. And so it was on this night. Kobe was focused as usual, roared off the runway in total darkness, began searching for the appropriate site. He found one, radioed his team to be in position and get ready. He released his flare, which lit up the area like bolts of lightning. He then prepared to go into his climb upward. He'd done this maneuver dozens of times before. But on this night, Something went wrong. Something went very wrong. His head began to spin, and he started to experience vertigo. He became totally confused and disoriented. Now, generally, pilots are trained to recognize when they're going through something like this, but tonight, Kobe's condition was so intense that he didn't even realize that it was happening to him. Vertigo causes confusion to the point where one can't determine direction or altitude. So without realizing it, Kobe had turned his plane completely upside down. As far as he was concerned, he was flying straight up. That's what his brain was telling him he was doing at high speed. But in reality, he was flying straight for the ground. And so unbeknownst to Kobe, he was hurtling downward at frightening speed, heading for an explosive crash on the ground. And yet he had no clue. He looks at the gauges to determine his position, and he sees in utter shock and disbelief that the gauges is telling him that he's losing altitude, that he's hurling towards earth. He looked at the next gauge, and it's telling him the same thing, that he's going down. But his brain told him, I'm going up. Who do you listen to? Your brain, which clearly saying to him, you're going up, or the gauges that may be wrong. Maybe the gauges are malfunction, and your life is in the hands of this decision. And you have seconds to decide to follow your brain or follow the gauges. What did Kobe do? He did the only thing he could. He radioed his friends and he said, Hevra, tell me fast, am I going up or am I going down? And they looked on their radar and they immediately said, Kobe, I told your raid, I told your raid, I told your raid, you're going down, you're going down, you're going down, turn around now. At that point, Kobe took hold of the yoke, the stick that controls the direction and the position of the plane. He held it tight. He would have to yank it back towards himself to cause the plane to turn it back over so that it would be right side up. And he had to do this against his own brain that was now telling him that he was committing suicide by listening to his friends. 
Think about the situation. His instincts were telling him to do one thing. His mind is telling him to do the opposite. His life is hanging in the balance. He's filled with terror, and he musters the superhuman strength to go against the grain, to pull the stick back towards himself. The plane turns itself around, heads back upwards, and his life is saved. Why do I share with you this story about Kobe? That experience changed Kobe's life. He turned to spirituality. And slowly over the years, he became an observant Jew. And he often reflects back on that night over the skies of Lebanon by saying, you know, at times we go about our lives feeling certain that we're traveling in the right direction. We think we're climbing upwards. From our subjective perspective, we think and we feel that we're flying nose up as we should be. That we're doing our thing day in and day out, unaware that on a certain level we're afflicted with spiritual vertigo. There are signals, there are gauges all around us that tell us that something is not quite right, that it's not the way we should be flying, and we don't know who to listen to, the gauges or our own minds. So that's when we need to turn to our co-pilots, to our friends, to each other, to our trusted friends who are perhaps not in the same cockpit with us, but who can look honestly and objectively at our flight pattern and say, Hevra, tell me, which way is my nose pointing? Am I going up or am I going down? We each need friends in our lives. We need mentors in our lives who will not necessarily tell us what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. And that's indeed the camaraderie and support system that being part of a Jewish community traditionally affords. We provide each other with the strength that it takes to change course mid-flight. Start each day meaningfully. Click subscribe and hit the notification bell below for videos just like this.